I, I like making my sausage uh, meat because it is half the price. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there is, there is no nitrates, no nothing. Which there's nothing wrong with it. But um, this uh, this mix is uh, very easy to make. The only thing is, we just have to know what's going on. And then um, some days I pipe it in through casings, and sometimes you just leave it loose like that. I always, almost always, have a little bit in my fridge, just to quickly saute, add some beans to it, can of tomatoes, bring it up to a boil. You got dinner. Um, I don't know. It's it's just just boil it, like saute it, put some wine on it, rub some clouds, so you got instant dinner. So it's a nice thing to have at home. This is also a very Turkish way of cooking. Um, we use a lot of ground meat because uh, it's cheaper, and you have to feed, let's say, seven or eight people. One pound of ground meat feeds everyone, so I'm kind of used to this kind of cooking. Um, yeah, so we just we made our own sausages. Um, I'm gonna tell you, walk you through about what a breading station is and how what it achieves. We're just going to cook simplicity, hopefully at its best. Yeah, <laughs> It's such a nice thing to eat. Yeah, though. so we invited Jack to join us in the kitchen tonight, and so he's gonna like he put your cut up to like hardcore saturation. <laughs> I've been cooking for fifteen so years. So don't mess with Jack because this is like his thing. Jack, thank you for taking him out of the kitchen. That's a cool name, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's okay, a cool so name. I'm not sure if Lee has had a chance yet to post the recipe. Oh, she has. So the recipe is going to be posted as usual. If you have questions, feel free to type them into the comment section. I will relay them to Chef. Um, so if you have comments, you can drop them on the video and we'll get to that as they come in. Uh, <laughs> I got the mic. I got the camera. You guys can <laughs> keep on writing stuff. I'm kidding. Please give us feedback so we can um, fine tune this and do better. It's 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 very important to do a better job every single time, right? Yeah. You have to judge what you've done that day. At least that's how I work. And then uh, just always go home with a question, how can I do this faster, better, cleaner, whatever it is. Every day I come to the kitchen, Jack, and I'm like, oh, my God, I need to, like, you know, you could have, like, washed the dishes earlier. You could have come through that faster. I, I let my dog, I, I let my dog read them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blast. I'm like, hey, Louie, like, there's a bunch of messages. And then on the weekends, he comes through and he's like, oh, do we have a little, uh, I wish our cleaner I don't have time for that, literally. <laughs> I, I, I don't have. We, we work separately in the, in the same building. No, not me. You have to. You guys. Yeah. Like, you, okay. should, you should get I'm out of here. Go. Um, I'm going to find out what the deal is with that dog. Make sure it's okay. Yeah, please. Because um, I'm yeah. genuinely concerned. So, um, yeah, if you're cooking at all tonight, you've got lots of crumbles. If you think about the recipes and you want to cook along, I'm going to take my first 15 because the lady is not leaving. Well, could you get up, please? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not getting a microphone today, so everything's going to be going through Chef Lee. So, uh, anyhow, you, uh, you're in charge of the microphone. Yeah, could you, could you come on? Let's go. <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> that's, that's just the last squeeze there. Um, all right, so for the box, see, this is a, quite a good recipe, actually. Let's put this away. We are going to take one potato, and it's not even peeled yet, and I'm going to peel this. And I'll show you how easy this is. I'm going to sewer... I'm using a yellow flesh potato. This is a Yukon Gold. Um, you're more than welcome to use russets. I love the flavor of Yukon Gold. Um, I wouldn't use back seat potatoes for these, just so you know. Uh, Yukon Gold, if you have need one potato in your kitchen, Yukon Gold is a great, great bet. Make sure you don't have any marks on them. And then you're just going to grab the coarse part of your grater and literally grate it. There's no high technique or nothing. Uh, is the dog okay? She didn't call an old man. That's very sensitive of you. Yeah. 
kind of it's important to dog people. You can get politically correct correction every once in a while, throw those weirdos in the park. Um, anyway, so this is grated. Now this potato has a lot of um, moisture in it, so I'm just going to put a pinch of salt, smallest pinch of salt, just to get rid of the excess moisture so it doesn't make our batter wet. Okay, and then we're just going to put this aside for a second, let the salt do the work, and um, pull out the salt structure, season it, and also extract the excess moisture. So that's that. Now let's give it a rinse to our hands. Here, I don't have to keep you waiting, I got good old mashed potatoes. Uh, they're literally, um, you have the uh, ratio in your um, recipes. It's literally just mashed potatoes with 16, it's, this is a uh, two pounds of, sorry, it was a pound of potatoes. I added 60 mils of milk to it and just seasoned it with salt and there's nothing else in there. And I didn't even use a potato ricer, so it could be quite coarse. We're cooking Irish food tonight, so it's, you don't have to be too uh, fine dining you. To this, so uh, there's my eggs. I forgot, to, hey, how do you like that? Fail. <laughs> so, I'm going to grab my egg, crack it. You all can crack one hand egg, right? Uh, I'm just going to grab my milk and add my milk. There is only one milk and that's whole milk. The rest of them are uh, watery substances. Um, I don't know what's the big deal of that one percentage of fat. Like it's, it's, it makes all the difference to use homo milk. Uh, I'm adding my flour here. How many? Why are you just even bothering drinking it? Drink water. No, drink water. Like, why bother? Like, if you're not doing the, I don't know. That's my motto is anything worth doing in life is worth overdoing it. And uh, if it's not good for you, just let it go and don't do it. Absolutely, Doug. You can. Uh, Doug was asking if we can just substitute uh, sweet potatoes for this. Absolutely, you're more than welcome to. Um, that being said, I've never done it. But get creative. I'm adding my flour to the mashed potatoes. Uh, flour, water, and egg. Then I'm going to grab my potato mixture here. Uh, and I'm, I'd like to show you how much actually water is going to come out of this. I mean, naturally it has water, but that little pinch of salt actually is doing its magic. Okay. Squeeze until nothing's coming out and put some force into it, please. And then this goes in, in the bowl, not around the bowl. Don't be like me. I'll be right back. Let's rinse our hands. Let's get our pan started. Medium heat is excellent. And I'm going to mix this around until it becomes. Now, you can put a little bit of baking powder to this if you want, like about like uh, a tablespoon. No, sorry, a, a, a teaspoon. Excuse me. A teaspoon. Just to make it a little bit lighter. But. Again, this is the base recipe. You don't have to jazz on it, and uh, as you can see, it's quite liquid. Now, there's flour in here, and whenever you're dealing with any batter, and any batter that is, you always have to let your batter rest and uh, finish its uh, uh, absorption of flour. The whole thing equalizes and settles down. So to this, I have another batter in the fridge I happen to have. So that uh, you have a nice consistency. Also, keeping your batter cold is very, very important. What is that noise? I have no idea. Okay. 
Uh, you can speak up, Jack. Give him the mic at least. You know how much they pay him to talk? <laughs> Let's take advantage of him while we have him. I don't mind paying him. I'll pay for his stuff. Um, okay. Now I have a nice amount of butter in there. Let's get this butter. Now you want your butter to be slightly bubbling. Let's put some momentum. A little bit more butter. We could use a little bit more butter. I think we got our sound back. Did Can we? you guys hear me now? <laughs> I think I'll give the microphone to Jack. He can be our okay, peanut so, gallery tonight. As you can see, I have a bubbling water. Just gonna grab it's, if if you can tell the difference, um this one is settled down and it's slightly firmer, which is nice. So that's thicker than Jacob's batter, right? Slightly thicker, yes. Just, uh, I would give it at least 30 minutes to ideally to an hour. And then I'm just going to put this in, in here. At first it will stick, so use a non-stick pan. And then eventually, as the bottom coagulates, as the protein, egg protein uh, coagulates, uh, it will turn into a mess that we can flip it. Turn it down to medium. And as you can see with the light bubbling around the edges, let the, do, let the cooking do its work. I uh, would like to think so, yes. Yeah, I, I would like to think so, yes, if you're, if you're gluten free. So that's that. And now, today, when we serve this, we have just like a good old plain, um, plain uh, sour cream. Uh, if, you have, if you're a fancy one, if you can find creme fresh, it's a little bit more luxurious. Um, but you want something sour, and if you're concerned about your fat, dairy fat intake, please use yogurt. Yogurt is equally delicious. There is nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Um, then, just like I mentioned, we're going to use some watercress just to give some um, crunch and freshness. recipes that were loaded um, were the original set you sent that had the wrong information. So I'm just trying to update the recipe with the correct information. It had the uh, instructions for the boxy listed twice. I have no idea what you're doing. Doing. I sent the recipes once. I'm sorry, you didn't send me correct. No, you did. You sent a correction through. Anyhow, I'm just trying to load the correction. Okay. All right, so this is cooking. While that is happening, let's talk about scorched egg. Now, let me open this up. First things first, uh, these sausage balls are about 100 grams. Um, two, I would say they're about two and a half to three ounces, two ounces, I would say. 100 grams, yes. Um, now, to form our Mixture. Now, if you get, when you get good at this, you can totally do this completely on your hand. But there's an easier way of doing it. Just grab your uh, saran wrap, put it on your countertop so it doesn't contaminate. Okay, now we're just going to grab some water. Slightly put water there. So we can, uh, the outside is nice and shiny as well as we can manipulate it. And then I'm just going to start to stretch this into a... Uh, Let's say a four or five inch circle. I haven't done this perfectly in years now. So I had to practice a little bit today. No pressure. It's too late now, I guess. It's just like uh, we already fired the 
Anyway. Um, eggs. Now, I like a nice and soft runny center, but I do scotched eggs. Uh, therefore, I cook my eggs uh, um, soft boiled. Now, when you boil your eggs, I know it sounds like a super easy subject, but they always ask me how many minutes. It is more about how many eggs are you putting into your pot and how much water is in there. Come on, Bob Sweet. For some reason, I can't get the correct recipes to load. I'm really sorry, you guys. Um, I'll right. keep working on it. Now, as you can see, as it heats up, it crusts, it'll uh, get all get off the pan. You might go a little bit of poke, but that's fine. Uh, so with your eggs, it will take about five minutes. So you're going to start with 500 mils of water, uh, simmering water. Um, and you are going to start with room temperature eggs. What I usually do is I just put my eggs in a little bowl, shallow obviously, and run them onto warm water until they temper. So I'm not shocking my pan, a pot, boiling pot of water with just cold eggs and drop the temperature. That's why most of the uh, fluctuations or doneness problems happens with eggs. So if everything is at room temperature, you'll be just fine. So just put them in a bowl, run room temperature water on top of them, and then uh, in about like two to three minutes, drop them in. Every time you add an egg, you're going to add uh, 150 mils of water to that pot. Saying that you start with 500, right? Uh, one egg, completely fine. If the second comes in, you're going to 650 mils. So that you can keep a ratio of water so you can gauge your time properly, right? If you take a liter of water and put 10 cold eggs in there, that will require another uh, two minutes to get to your doneness. So that's that's where all this happens. I don't even trust myself this much. As you can see, it is wonderfully golden brown, but like a little potato there. Come on, come on now. I have fuel in the oven, just so I can serve my guests. They're not waiting, and I, they're not watching me making pancakes. Obviously, right? So if you're cooking for a crowd at home, this is a great way to hold them. Absolutely. Just uh, turn your oven to 200, put them on a tray overlapped on each other, and just keep them in the oven until they're ready to eat. Um, so anyway, so this egg has been boiled for five minutes. It is, the white is super custardy, and, and that's one of the reasons why we um, temper the eggs, so that the shock doesn't seize up the egg white protein. So they don't go plasticky, but they go custardy. They eat very, very soft. Okay, and then after I boil them, I just take them and I still warm them in, sorry, I, I still run warm water on them so you're just not dropping the temperature like this, but you're just actually doing this so that um, your egg white stays nice. Again, lift up the plastic, put the egg to the one side, if you're either going left to right, right to left, Peel the pl put the plastic right on top of it. See that little water? Just gave it continuous... Uh, um, texture to the meat and then I'm going to pinch on each end okay. and I'm going to take the excess off obviously not as these and then I'm going to grab this pour it onto my hand I'm going to wet my hand and I'm going to start pinching this part. And then roll it into an egg shape as best as you can. Again, there is no man handling this. You have to be nice and gentle. Okay. And the more you practice, the better you're going to get. So keep on uh, <laughs> keep on doing it. And as you can see, it's beautiful this way. Now, ideally, before I dress this, I would like to put this in the freezer for just to firm up for about, um, I don't know, 15 minutes. So your uh, sausage mixture is nice and firm when you bread them. Again, you will need very, very light hands for this job. 
up on my stuff. All right, so let's get rid of this as well. I should open up a box to show off. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> I get great motivation at work. <laughs> um, and then eventually this will look like nice and expanded, which is almost there. It needs about 30 more seconds. Comes our breeding station. Let's crack our egg. And do a little whiskey business. Whiskey or risky? Whiskey. Risky. Oh, risky. risky. Um, I haven't had my glass of scotch beer yet, so. Oh, right. Yeah, David's not drinking this month, so usually David and Dennis have a little whiskey at the beginning of the evening, but uh, David's on uh, hiatus this week. No, I, I did a catering. Somebody just gave me a nice bottle of scotch. Actually, the only scotch I've ever drank is a McCallum 12, usually. I've been uh, a... My home life is great with these days. Awesome. <laughs> I, I drink a glass of 12 year old uh, McKellen every day. So Dennis has his dog and his whiskey and his wine. You're basically yeah. George Thorogood. I, I had some, uh, oh, I hate that guy. <laughs> I don't ever say that to him. I've been to one of his, con I've been to his concert, the second song. We, I, me and my uh, partner back then just looked at each other. I'm like, these guys are, and I've listened to the guy all my life. These guys are jerks, and then he just got up and left. Really? It was horrible. Uh, no, Barb, David didn't give it up for Lent. He gave it up. David's in rehab. I'm just going to say it. No, I'm kidding. Um, rehab's for quitters. No, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that either. Um, David is doing all the Whole30 diet. So basically, I've been eating at work all month because I am not doing the Whole30 diet. But um, yeah, it means no booze, no gluten, no dairy, which I would die, basically. Um, so, All um, right, our pancake is uh, done. Our pan, our pancake, our uh, box feet. That smells buttery delicious. That's just a nice thing to eat. It's just like the softest, uh, yeah, it's just like the softest mashed, fried mashed potato ever. Now to this, I'm just gonna grab some of my sour cream. Oh, you can spread it, but let's not be too, too dainty here. Rules or regulations for amateurs. We're beyond that now. Um, and then to this, I'm just going to grab my beautiful uh, smoked salmon slices. You can make uh, Pinterest roses and whatnot if you want. Drop some capers here. Drop some uh, shaved raw onion. I, I know uh, Angie loves them. Whoa, David. People are excited for you. Way to go. Nina's happy for you, David. Barb is for them. I told Barb he'd be a great designated driver if we could go anywhere. <laughs> and then, um, just for a little bit of crunch and greenery, which is nice. Watercress, if you've never had watercress, uh, please stop by Meslin Greens and go to your uh, store and buy watercress. It's available year round, especially after March. Um, it switches to the local one all the stores, and it is one of the most beautiful uh, greens to eat. And if you would like, you can dress it, but honestly, I don't want to go too high acidity. I also have my sour cream. I just want a little bit of pop of color and as well as a bitter accent. Now, one other good way to finish this is uh, to use uh, bar bitters. Have you ever done that? Uh, yeah. I use bitters a lot when I'm cooking, actually. Yes. They're really uh, I, delicious. I don't, I don't use in cooking. I don't do hot applications on it. But what I usually do is um, finish that cold smoked fish or like a little tartare or, or this and that. I it's haven't good. used it for hot, actually. I, I've used it in salad dressings and things like that. All it's right. a nice accent. Thank you, sir. This Thank you. you. And this is for you. Uh, you'll hear the comments in, uh, in a minute. From the peanut gallery? This, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just give him the microphone, man. Go away. Fire away. So, 
scotch pad. Let's turn up our uh, oil. So hot, and I'll take a sip of wine because I'm open frying. So Jackson, he grew up with his dad making like old school potato pancakes. Is this oh, really? is this your first boxty? This is my first boxty, and it definitely takes me back. But man, they're so buttery. It's very nice. Ooh, okay. Buttery. Wow. Thanks, Jack. You got a nice comment on your pancakes from Jack Nicholson? That's a good bet. <laughs> so, now we have to, uh, this is called a breading station. This stuff works with pork chops. This stuff works with calamari, chicken breast, schnitzel. They're all the same thing. It relies on, on three things. Flour, egg, and uh, bread crumbs. Today I'm using panko because it's coarser. You're more than welcome to use cornflakes. That works brilliantly also. Anything that has a little bit of room to uh, crisp up in the deep fat fryer in my pot here. So it's, if this was like to be too dark or toasted, then it will burn, obviously. But um, this one is just dehydrated and shredded bread. Now, first things first. First line of defense. We have to be able to uh, just cover this so we can catch like all the moisture. So. And also, as things deep fry, because it's hot in there. If you put your hand in there, you know, you just uh, you'll you'll probably get a second degree burn in a matter of like two seconds. So it, it is quite hot in there. So when you apply that kind of intensity, uh, things seize up and starts to push the moisture content out. We have to stop that because uh, if you have a not properly breaded thing that's just pushing moisture, especially if you're like six. Uh, scotch eggs in here in a deep fryer you're looking at a disaster a recipe for a disaster so we have to do a really really good job and especially this has a lot of moisture in it uh, and uh, you know moisture and hot fat does not like each other and it catches on fire pretty pretty fast so please whenever you're doing this or anything or any open frying or deep frying please be present in the moment don't be dis distressed or, or um, drunk or, or, or silly just safety is, I know it sounds very childish and not kids and geeks and stuff, but safety is very important. So do you want me to come do it? Is that what you're saying? You had enough drinks to enough to qualify <laughs> for the job. So. We have two questions, Chef, sorry. Um, can you use, obviously you can use regular breadcrumbs, fine breadcrumbs if you don't have panko. Sure. Just maybe not going to be as crunchy. Uh, the panko gives it's a different. It's just a different texture. Right. It just is. And I know you're not um, familiar with the air fryer, but Kitty's wondering if you can use an air fryer instead of I a deep fryer. I don't own an air fryer. I, I don't okay. know. What, I'm not against it. I'm, I'm, but there's always a product that comes by Instapots and air fryers. I never buy any of those. Um, you should check with Angie. She has an air fryer. I do, but I've never made scotch eggs in it. Usually, I mean, my air fryer is usually Listen, full of chicken wings. Listen, if you're doing wings. this, just do it right. Just, just do it right. Because I don't. I don't even know how air fryer works. Anyway, Barb shared instructions for air fryer or scotch eggs, Kitty. you got to yeah. take your chances with that. Thanks, Barb. So just to stop that moisture, first things first, we are going to put this in flour mixture. Now, when you're working breading something, at home it's very easy. You can rinse your hands. But at work, I'm going to do 300 scotch eggs. So there's a method to this thing. You're going to designate a uh, dry hand and a wet hand. Okay, and then first I'm going to toss, put, grab my scotch egg with my wet hand, put it in here, and toss it and shake off the excess. Okay, now this flour coating is going to uh, get the egg, eggs to adhere to your scotch egg, but at, at, um, but at the same time it will grab any moisture that's been pushed out by the egg, uh, the meat protein in there. And it will just going to catch it and stop that leakage right where it starts. So that's number one line of defense. Two, so now we're going to toss this in egg. Dry hand puts it in, wet hand goes in. And uh, the reason why we're using an egg is an egg is a protein that coagulates. So even if the moisture hits that layer of flour and manages to escape, egg will coagulate because is the first thing that's going to... Uh, Coagulate, if I could coagulate one more time, I would. Um, 
Pardon me? Yeah. Never mind. Um, <laughs> but it will, it, it, it will stop and create another wall. And it also, just like flour did to the egg as an ad adhering agent, it's going to uh, act as a glue when you toss it in the pan for breadcrumbs. Your wet hand drops it in, and your dry hand comes in, and then you just toss it around. It's not rocket science, really. You just got to do small things right. That being said, I still haven't delivered yet. Did you season the flour or the breadcrumbs? Seasoning the flour never works, just so you know. Taking a giant tub of flour or like this and put a pinch of salt, that salt is not... Uh, activated by any liquid so it could be anywhere in that flour so always season your protein first protein or season it afterwards uh, that, that is just an old trick that everybody keeps on doing it I think 20 people just achieved nothing really but, um, but some chefs will fight you for that for sure and then And then after we just uh, coat this whole thing, we're just going to grab our scotch egg. The beauty of it, this stuff can freeze. So if you want to do... At that stage. At this ready. stage, yeah. Um, if you would like to make 30 of them, so you can have snacks, and you're more than welcome to deep fry it from the freezer too. It just works brilliantly. And then the last thing but not, Gonna get our temperature to 350. We're getting them around like 260. Let's crank this up. So if you're doing these ahead of time, you can get them to this stage, put them on a cooking sheet, freeze them like that, and then throw them in a Ziploc bag once they're frozen. And then um, do you recommend cooking them from frozen or cooking them from thawed? Cooking them from well, I would cook them from frozen because also freezer. What it's going to do is again. When heat applies, it'll push out moisture, but so does the freezing process. So it might get really soggy and moppy. Just before it gets to that stage, just pull it out and drop it into the deep fryer so it has no chance of uh, uh, figuring out what's, what just happened. So it'll sneak up on it? Sneak up on the scotch egg. <laughs> now, I'm a smart cook, so I didn't have to just like, there are six of, six of these. Smart and humble. Don't buy into the hecklers. The hecklers? Yeah, they just just put a smile, be pleasant, and then uh, yeah, mahalo. You love it. That's in your head, right? No, it's That's real life, D. You come back every Thursday for more. Every Thursday, you're right here looking for more of you. Have you seen the face I have? <laughs> I have. Yeah, I got like <laughs> I, I I got a bunch of people show up on the first of the month with the money bags from my place. It's just like. <laughs> X nay on the check pay. David's gonna want one. <laughs> Stop it. He gets paid. No. <laughs> David normally gets fed, but this whole thirty things cramping my style. I'm the only one who's getting paid tonight. Just, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna put scotch egg or what? Do it, chef. There, your your fan club is like dying over there, waiting to see how this turns out. How many are there? Nobody. Well, Jack is here. <laughs> <laughs> If you can bring Jack Nicholson down. <laughs> He's your fan club. All right, so how come he ends up as the president all the time? He's just here for the eggs. Don't kid <laughs> yourself. All right, and again, calm, composed, quiet. You're not dancing like a uh, crazy person. Doug says, uh, chef is just like me. He'd be humble if there was any reason to be. What do you do, Doug? <laughs> No, let's put all the six eggs and see what happens. Oh, here we go. That is not a good idea. This is when things go badly. Um, I watch a lot of YouTubes on that. <laughs> when things go. And then grab your phone and say that, Siri, please put a timer for five minutes. And Siri usually does so. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so this is where you definitely don't walk away from the stove. You have to pay attention to what's going on. Absolutely. No, all the joking aside, this is very, very, very important. 
Now I'm trying to get back my uh, heat because that six eggs dropped the temperature 50 Fahrenheit. So let's just like turn it up. What we want to do is I'm on 325, 350 is a perfect place to be. So if those eggs were frozen, it would drop the temperature even more. So you'd have to be careful how many you're flying from frozen, I think. Absolutely. That, I mean, that's just common sense. Yeah. 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 You have to adjust those time and temperature thing. See, common sense is not common. I'm just telling you. I have faith in them. I'm pretty sure they're very smart. Hey, the people watching, I have all the faith in the world in them. But they're, they're uncommon people. They're here with us. But... <laughs> You know, generally speaking, common sense is not common. Awesome. I'm never going to forget those uh, sentences and meanings <laughs> and information that I didn't need to know. You're welcome. All right, we're back at, uh, I can smell the salt in there. It smells absolutely fresh. Good. Yeah, we're climbing up. Um, with this, honestly, apparently this is a great, great picnic snack. Which I had no idea that it was. Because it doesn't have to be served hot. No, no, it's no, delicious no, no, at room no. temperature. Yeah, just you can just fry it and leave it on top of the counter, uh, and uh, just as you pass by, you pop it away. And it's a, it's it's quite a nutritious thing to eat too, right? Because um, it's an egg, it's sausage, and it's crispy. There's breading in it, so uh, and it's not heavy on the bread. Now this this type of business, it's best served with uh, mustard. Um, but I, I like to condiment mustard and mayo together, which I don't think there's a name for this, because mustard and ketchup is a fancy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> this one doesn't have a name. It's Dijonese. That's the name. That's what it's called. I don't think so. Trust me. Look it up. I think so. I think so. Um, with your mayonnaise, you're more than welcome to uh, make your mayonnaise. The only thing about making a homemade mayonnaise is uh, you have to get the acidity right. If you don't get the acidity right, it won't be stable. And if it's not stable, spoilage might happen. Um, just a heads up on that. Um, if you're charging $30 a plate, please make your own mayonnaise. I get it. But uh, at home, Hellman's is just fine. But what I usually do is I take the Hellman's and um, add a little bit of nice uh, aged sherry. If you don't have this bottle at home, go to your store and grab one. I walk around with it. It's, it's good for everything. We have never used so much sherry vinegar in this kitchen until Dennis got here. Neither is and now fried in great seed oil. We go through one of those uh, jugs of uh, sherry vinegar every two weeks, approximately. Yeah, well, uh, uh, Chef, Doug would like to know if you could just review the spices that went into your sausage mixture. Um, smoked paprika, 2% diamond crystal kosher salt, and a large pinch of whole fennel seeds. It's a good old Italian sausage recipe. The only thing you need to measure, and this you have to uh, do it to activate the myosin in the meat so it becomes sausagey, right? How they say, you know, they make glue out of horses. It's that, that, that uh, chemical. If you don't have a certain salt percentage, then you are not going to get your emulsification in a sausage, which means that it's not going to be bouncy and snappy. So uh, grab yourself a that noise is not good. See the moisture? Is that a fire extinguisher? No, you took it home. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's, uh, anyway, uh, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, but Doug, if you if you're making the sausage, please stick with the recipe and be quite technical about it, uh, and and follow it directly. You have to have really good quality grind but not a whole lot of sinew. You have to have right salt percentage, minimum 1.6. That being said, this is diamond crystal kosher salt measures. If you're using uh, sea salt, its salinity is higher, so you have to drop a couple percentage. But uh, So if you're buying store-bought sausage, like I would get it from my butcher and just take it out of the casing or yeah. ask your butcher for his sausage before he puts it in the casing, um, and that'll work great. Absolutely, or learn how to make a sausage. I mean, it's not very hard, and it's rewarding, and you're paying half the price. Honestly, a uh, great, great investment. See that that aggression is coming from this part. So, chef, you're frying for color, or are you temping the the inside of the egg? Because you don't want to poke the egg. 
I am going uh, with pink on this one. So for color, basically. It's yeah, when they're nicely golden brown like this, it is a great approximation that things are going to be well in there. Also, just by gauging, just by also experience, right? Gauging by the size of the mass, I know that about five minutes of frying will get to the core enough to cook the sausage on the outside but not damage the egg a whole lot. I'm hoping that is. I still haven't uh, delivered it yet. And as you can see, just like, oh man, let's put this to the side, safety first. I can promise you every single scotch egg served in 99.9% uh, .9 of every location around the world has a hard boiled egg inside. Because it's convenient, because yeah. uh, people are ignorant and they, they don't like their jobs and they just don't want to be there and they don't have the enthusiasm. Hey, that's not fair. What do you mean doesn't mean they don't like their jobs just because they're uh, cooking a scotch egg uh, to hard boil. Yeah, they don't care. Mm, no, they don't care. I disagree. But um, it's what the training, it's how they learn to cook it. So this egg should be nice and soft inside. And if it's hard boiled, oh boy. She just erased my 15 years of experience in the kitchen in the cooks. How do you like that? No, ma'am. There's one way of doing things, and that's the right way of doing it. In the old days, we didn't share information technology. We didn't share information super fast. But at this day and age, if you're not doing a good job with all the available, which is actually a good start on here, uh, if you're not doing a good job, you should just go do something else. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, why would you sentence to something eight hour, nine hours a day that you don't like it? It's just unfair. It's just very odd to me. Um, you will need now. Should I serve this whole? No, well, you should cut it open so we can see how soft and gooey the egg is. Yeah, but at the same time, that is kind of like uh, somebody frying you an egg and breaking the yolk and sending it your way. You know, I want to cut into this and, and, and see it. Do you want me to come do it so I can eat it? No. Okay. No. Uh, yeah, why don't you come over? No, why don't we send Jack over? Jack's our uh, Scotch egg. He's the president of Scotch egg. We're putting them up on the spot. Yep. You have to let you guy know, so. <laughs> oh, here, Jack. Here, Jack. I'm excited to see this not hard-boiled egg in there. So you got a bit of a, a bit of a. Like, you, you still hasn't, you still haven't uh, opened it up yet. Let me just put my mask on. Here. Let's do this right. All right, sir. I am not going to cut into this, and this is our final presentation. It is as simple as it gets. It's the sauce, it's the egg, and uh, let's provide you with some cutlery. I'm going to pass one to Miss Angie over there. Like literally though, like slicing proteins is a little bit of pop out I found at, at the restaurant industry. Like you're serving a large roast, obviously slice it, but uh, if you're serving this, You, you, you gave it butter now. Oh, All right, Jack. I'm going to step away and go get drunk <laughs> and serve Angie. And let's see if we did a good job. I'm excited <clears throat> because I love scotch <laughs> eggs. Oh. I don't know. I don't know if you're allowed to say orgasmic on TV, but like, <laughs> look at that. That is amazing. Soft yolk inside. That's amazing. Your tone changed when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I needed a moment, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good looking scotch though. It is a now I want to take take this to the picnic though because it'll drip drop. Done. Oh, and the, the spices in the sausage, really nice. That's amazing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh my God. That was quite a little bit of little bit of pressure, but now we know that we've done a good job. Let me cut one open. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, let me cut one open and show the inside to you.
Jack says that is epic. Epical. <laughs> epic. Um, I think uh, this is as good as it gets. You can like drink that like a chalice. Chalice. I'm gonna get myself a chalice. He drinks out of chalices. Um, dear friends, this is how it's done. Chef Barb would like to know. Actually, a couple of people have asked if it's better to do them hard boiled if you're taking them on a picnic or. Depends how much you love your guests. <laughs> um, in the restaurant world, when you're doing uh, service, um, you always, always, and always, which is a part of the deal, uh, have to uh, think of your guests. The ease of eat and how it's going to go and, and the, the type of establishment. You know, you don't. Uh, so, so I would say if you're taking it to the picnic, I would just be a little bit more on the done side, more, more doneness in it, so that it's not really gooey in there. But at a restaurant, I would definitely serve it just like this. All right. I, I don't think Angie is coming. I think I'm just uh, doing the sign up on my own. <laughs> That is really delicious. That is really good, actually. Nice David, did you get a close up of the egg? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, David. Um, I feel like maybe uh, uh, Mr. Nicholson might need to bring you out to the highwayman to teach everybody how to make a soft boiled Scotch egg. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll rent them to you, Jack. I'll. Uh, it all happened in front of your eyes, so there's no secret to that. There's no secret to good cooking. It's just uh, doing small things right. It works. Recipes work. Yeah, this is delicious. This is not like the pub food I got when I was in Ireland. Yeah. Good job, Dean. I prefer cash, by the way. <laughs> I'm still not paying you. No. I have the job. You know, let's go sit down. Come on. <laughs> um, the box tea was good. Truthfully, I'm not a lover of smoked salmon. It's just not my thing. I love smoked food generally, but smoked salmon is just not my favorite thing. But the box tea was really delicious. My my stepdad growing up is Irish, and so we ate a lot of that at my house, and we ate it with lots of leftover meat. So we would eat it with, like, I don't know, leftover roast beef. He would turn the potatoes into that. Um, and I think adding the grated potatoes into it adds a nice texture to it. As I've opposed never made it before. I made potato pancakes, but this was one of the first for me. I did like the way he said it's Irish too. I would have uh, just gotten intimidated a little bit. No. I wouldn't express it, but I would have gotten intimidated a little bit. I could smell the fear. <laughs> Is that what that was? I am also trained on uh, in manipulation, uh, <laughs> espionage, and uh, interview rings. And, um, yeah. Right. High crimes and misdemeanors. That's you. No, it's it's just practically government service. Yes. <laughs> Is that what you were doing when you were in Turkey? Oh, you can't talk about it now. He's in witness protection of some sort. Hey, um, let's sign it off. <laughs> I, I, I want to go home with my dog. Um, so there's three more Scotch eggs left. I feel like this might be Jack's like best day of Jack's life. Yeah, right I now. will. I will. I'm gonna send them home with Jack for sure. No, we'll see about that. We'll see how much money Jack has. <laughs> we'll, we'll shake him down before he leaves. Sure. Um, so thank you for joining us. The correct recipes will be shared on our website. Um, as soon as I can figure out how to do that. I'm sorry, I was having a technical challenge with my computer while um, Chef was cooking, but I'll make sure the correct recipes get posted. Um, and we're interested to hear what you might like to learn from here. We'll be back here next Thursday. Leave and some comments, and uh, if you would like to see. Well, because we, we take requests, literally. This is how it's happening. Uh -huh. This was Jack's request. No, I'm kidding. Um, last I week. I think this is like Scott Dennis. Dennis, or, um, Jack thinks Dennis should make Scotch eggs again next week, just so Jack can show up and have Scotch eggs again next week. Well, you so. got the recipe, too. The method right. and everything. So, oh, Jack, you're in charge of Scotch eggs next week. We'll be at your house videotaping you <laughs> making Scotch eggs. Um, so, thanks for joining us tonight. Hopefully, um, you'll send us some ideas for future segments. I have some ideas of things that I would like to cook. Now the weather's sort of changing. Um, we have lots of... Um, you, you eat by the weather? 
I, well, I eat sort of more seasonally, so the spring food's coming. Fresh asparagus, fresh rhubarb. Yeah. There's tons of really great food that's I'm excited. We have coming. some of the best produce in the world, if not one of the best. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really remarkable what Valley yeah. produces here. I'm fresh greens, fresh produce here in the Fraser Valley. And um, I feel like with this sunshine that we've had the last few days, that we're going to have maybe another early start to berry season. I haven't heard anything official about that. But last year, the berries came so early. I feel like we were eating berries like around Easter time for the early uh, strawberries here in the Fraser Valley. So maybe we'll be back on that on that path. Um, so today actually marks the one year anniversary that we closed our cooking school for COVID. Um, we didn't start our online cooking classes for a few weeks down the road. It took us a little while to kind of figure out what we were doing and what this was going to look like. But I just really want to thank everybody for sticking with us for this last year. Uh, it's been really hard. And, um, you know, it was a really tough year. And, it, and it's still hard. Uh, we're just used to it now. Um, but our staff, my staff, my team here at Well Season, Chef Dennis, Everybody just really did what they had to do to kind of make everything work and make sure we could keep our lights on and keep the rent paid and everybody else getting paid. And so I just really want to thank you guys for everything you did for us the last year since we closed our cooking school. Um, this, this class, this Thursday night class, has really been an investment from me and an investment from a lot of our partners, people like Otter Co-op, Johnston's Pork, BC Blueberries, all these companies that have sort of come and stepped up and said, hey, let's let's keep people engaged and talking about food and sharing great recipes. So I want to thank all of our sponsors um, who've supported this sort of online kind of environment that we were pushed into. Um, and it's been great for us. It's been a lot of fun. Dennis and I have become really good friends over the last year. We've had a few good fights. He's like my brother. Uh, we're like, yeah. But all all that stuff is in your head, Andrea. I don't know. I just come here, do the job, go home. <laughs> oh, we fight like constantly. Uh, uh, but it's been really um, an interesting ride the last year. So this has sort of been our replacement we, for the cooking we had school. The fight. We had yeah, the fight. We had the but, fight. but we had all the support from uh, your dear friends in the community. And uh, anybody who fought with Seals is, is going to come on top of us. And yeah. Then, um, yeah. But it, it, it was a difficult year, but... Will you see the end of the tunnel? Hopefully, Hopefully, yeah. We'll be vaccinated soon, and we'll get back maybe to some real in-person classes. But in the meantime, we're going to keep cooking here. We've engaged some of our sponsors for some classes that are going to be coming up. We have some really great ideas for some really fun classes. Halibut season opened last excited, week. Yeah. So we've got a really great halibut class coming. Uh, we've got some friends, uh, our friends at Otter Co-op and Liquor on 240, or Otter, Angry Otter Liquor. Um, they're going to sponsor some classes. So we've got some really fun stuff coming up, but we're still taking ideas from you guys. So if you have something you'd like to see or you'd like to learn, we'd love to hear from you about that. Um, but I think we'll be back here next Thursday, 530. I'll leave this thing. I'll just uh, hop on a plane. And, uh... <laughs> He's not going anywhere. We'll be here next Thursday, 530. We'll look forward Thanks to see you later. there. Thanks for joining us tonight. Enjoy your evening.